In March of 2020, I created the mobile app called Uptill. It's an app that helps you keep track and count down to events that you have coming up. I made a video documenting the process of making the app. That video is linked up here if you're interested. Over the past two weeks, I've worked on revamping the app's user interface. In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes explaining how I did it and highlighting things that I learned through the process. Let's get into it. As I stated earlier, the main thing I wanted to change with this revamp was the user interface. When I originally built the app, I designed it on the fly using a concept from an app that I created in college but never deployed. The idea was for the homepage to have a list of countdowns that the user has created with background pictures they've chosen. So a selected countdown would look like this. This design looks good, but like anything in tech, it was time for a change. For this revamp, I decided to save myself the stress of coming up with a new design. So I outsourced the design to someone who knew a lot more about design than I did. I gave them the requirements, showed them what the existing app looks like, and asked them to develop something. After a little bit of back and forth, we agreed on a design. The main things that stand out from the original design are one, the color palette. The original design did not quite have a color palette. I designed it on the fly and the color palette was the last thing on my mind when I was designing it. The primary colors for the new design are purple and gray, which I really like because they complement each other really well. The second thing that stands out in the new design is the home page. Instead of displaying each countdown with its background image, we decided to use the same format for all countdown to give the page a cleaner look. We also opted for a floating button bar and made the create countdown page a model that slides up instead of being a full page on its own. The final change that isn't shown in the design is the media gallery. This is something I added while developing. I realized a lot of users didn't choose the background image for their countdowns. They ended up using the default one. The idea was for the user's homepage to look like this, but they ended up looking like this instead. To help add variety, I added this gallery that gives users options to pick from a preset category of pictures instead of always sticking to the default. With all those changes, I proceeded to start coding. I figured it would take me two or three days at most to finish the whole revamp. Well, I thought wrong. The first thing I had to do was spin up the development version of the project on my machine. This was where I encountered the first roadblock. The one constant about coding and coding projects in general is that things change even if you didn't change anything. This sounds weird, but let me explain. You could be working on a project today and everything works fine. You come back to that same project tomorrow and it doesn't compile for one reason or another giving you the weirdest errors. This was the case with this project. I spent the whole day simply trying to get the project to run. After about seven hours of Googling, searching Stack Overflow and trying different fixes, it worked. The error was related to a change in software architecture from Xcode 11 to Xcode 12 and how it communicated with the new M1 Mac chips. I had no control over this, but it still affected the project. Regardless, I'm glad I figured it out. The next day, I started working on the app. I had to be cautious about handling users' data when developing. The app already has active users and the database schema is set already, so I needed to make sure that the changes I'm making are compatible with the existing schema so as not to break anything. I was also working from the production database, so if I messed anything up, there could be potential repercussions for users who are currently using the app. This is not the way you're supposed to do it. Ideally, you want separate databases and separate environments for production and development, but this is kind of hard to do with Firebase. I thought about it more and decided to create a new path in the database that is separate from the production path and use that for my testing. I also created a new user profile using the unmodified code to develop and test from the view of an existing user. The first page I worked on was the countdown detail page. I did this page first because it required the least modifications from the existing design. The only thing that needed to change were the location of the wordings, the font, and adding three buttons to the bottom of the page. I also thought knocking out this page fast will give me momentum to go on and finish the rest. I finished this page in about four hours and moved on to tackling the homepage. The app already had an existing homepage. I didn't want to delete or modify the existing homepage because I figured I would probably need it to copy code from. It's the page that fetches data from the database, so I didn't want to modify it either. I created a new page instead and started building off that. The first thing I did on this new page was to try to create the floating button bar. I thought this would be the easiest part of the project because if you know anything about Flutter, you know everything is a widget, literally. If I need a grid, all I have to do is use the grid widget, pass in parameters and everything is created for me. I thought this would be the case, but it turned out to be the opposite. There are no inbuilt floating button bars in Flutter. The only other option was for me to create my own widget, which I honestly didn't want to do at the time. After multiple Googling sessions, I found this article by Akshay Murray where he showed how to create a floating button bar. It didn't quite look like mine, but his article was very detailed and had a great explanation. He also mentioned how you could tweak his code to fit your own needs and showed examples, so I went to work using his code. The first step was to replicate what he had made on my app, 
After that, I started modifying it little by little until I came up with my own version. This took about four hours. Shout out to you, Akshay, for the awesome article. The next step was to start creating the homepage. I exported the icons from the Figma design and imported them into the app. While creating the countdown cards, I ran into a problem where the icons I was importing showed up as black on the app, but the images were white. I dug into it more and realized it had something to do with the way icons were displayed on Flutter. I changed the format from icon to image and that fixed the problem. I finished building the card and after that, I copied the function that fetches from the database and tweaked it to create a new card for each countdown. I then proceeded to create the page where you make the countdown. Luckily for me, I didn't have much to do here. There was a plugin that I could install directly from the package library that pretty much had the style I was going for. I learned how to use it, installed it, then transferred the data from the existing form to the new page. After that, it was a matter of changing the theme and adding the gallery. Speaking of the gallery, I got the pictures from that architect explorer on Instagram. Go check her out, she has some great work. At this point, development was pretty much done. The only thing left was testing. I loaded the app on my physical device and tested it to ensure that what I was seeing on the emulator was accurate on real devices. I found some resolution issues with the icons and how they were displayed on real phones, so I fixed them. I also found and fixed a few spacing issues. I did the same thing on an Android device. I bought this relatively inexpensive Android phone last year to test my apps. I'm glad I did because I found some spacing issues that would have caused massive problems on smaller screens. My code used constant values for the size of specific items. Those values were based on iPhone 12 Pro Max, a relatively big phone. This meant the design would be too big for a smaller screen phone. I had to go through the code and adjust those numbers to scale according to the size of the user's screen. After some more manual testing, I built a production version of the app and uploaded it to App Store Connect for internal testing. I also sent the Android version to the Google Play Store for beta testing as well. I sent it to a few friends, they reviewed it and they gave me feedback. Finally, I updated the screenshots for the App Store and released the app to the general public. Go check it out and let me know what you think. My biggest takeaway from this project is being patient and paying attention to detail. I thought about dropping some features like the floating bottom bar because there was no pre-made widget for it. After taking my time to read through Akshay's article line by line, I understood his code enough to make adjustments and make it my own. A similar situation happened with the model pages. At first, they were not behaving as expected. I thought they wouldn't work, but again, I read the documentation and experimented with it a little bit longer until I eventually figured it out. I would also add that all the times that I got frustrated that something was not working as I wanted, it was late at night at like 2 or 3 a.m. after coding for like 8 hours straight. When I returned the next morning refreshed, energized and with new perspectives, everything seemed to fall in place. I would highly recommend taking breaks from time to time when you're coding, especially when things don't seem to work out as you want. Sometimes, all you need is a new perspective and the easiest way to get that is to step away for a little while. That's it for this video. Go check out the app and let me know what you think. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you go check out the app right now, you'll notice that some parts will be different from what I showed in the video. There was a two week gap between when I showed the video and when the app was released. In those two weeks, I made some more UI changes and enhancements. Go check out the app, leave a review, rate the app and share it with your friends. If you have any features you'd like to see on the app, feel free to leave them in the comment section. There's also a place to submit feedback and feature requests in the app as well. In the feature, I'll be adding widgets and the ability to share countdown with your friends. So stay tuned so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching and see you next time.